Welcome to the Nexus Unloaded podcast. This is Will Crozier. And I'm Nikki Westcomb. We are the founders of Nexus Performance. Joining us on this wild ride is our heavyweight coaching team, ready to unleash the expertise to solve any problems in your journey to getting strong and jacked. Through our real world experience, we hope to break things down in a digestible, applicable and entertaining way. So pump up the volume and let's get into this. right angle now for you yeah you happy with that yeah yeah i'm happy with that i'm content now (laughs) it was your chair was like diagonal it was like sliced off so it was only going to see half your legs that's right that's right they need a bit of work before they actually it probably would have worked for you they're going to cut off your right leg (laughs) what do you mean didn't you say that your right leg's smaller than your left leg it is a little bit yeah Yeah. so it shows the big leg but it's on the comeback it is I've been observing people in the gym what weight they do in leg extension, so I have some sort of goal to. I still haven't used that leg extension. Oh, at all? Not a leg extension guy. No, I'm not I'm, allowed. I've noticed apparently. a few people uh, using it in the gym, and then I'm like, okay, he's using six plates from the bottom, so like I've got to at least get to that. <laughs> so like <laughs> that competitive mindset's coming because of my leg extension. For the people that don't know, like there's a. Uh, well, man, God, catch up, I guess. But, um, my right knee was giving me crap for a long time. I had some injection therapy, some PRP, some synovis. It's good. It's not perfect, but it's good enough now, uh, seemingly. And I can do leg extension again, jumped back on the leg extension. Unsurprisingly, when you don't do things for a very, very long time, they become very weak. Uh, and that makes me sad, but I know that. Uh, it will come back, hopefully, rather quickly. And so, yeah, I've been watching those other people. Are you people. doing single leg or both legs? I just do both legs. I'm yeah. sure it'll catch up. It's like, yeah, it'll, fair enough. It, it'll get there. If I have to do single leg, I'll do single leg. But in my experience, uh, once the issue is resolved, in this case, like the irritation, maybe a little bit of that neural drive or whatever the fuck you want to call it, uh, is restored. Um, and like it's hard to like not put equal pressure on, on like something like a leg essentially mm. where you're like locked in unless you're really trying. Uh, so I think it'll just hopefully just sort itself out to some degree. I am doing other single leg stuff like split squats, blah, mm. blah, blah. But like with the isolation stuff, I'm just like, nah, you just fuck you know. it. Who's your main competition at the moment? Is it Carson? I don't know. <laughs> Carson trains weird times. So mm. I don't know what he's doing. on leg Just watch his videos. Yeah, true. He puts up informational videos. On leg extension, no? Nah, they're not informational, but they're just videos now. Okay. He does edits. They're actually I, pretty, um, they're pretty good. <laughs> bought himself a camera. Shout He's out. He's been playing around with it. Uh, yeah, I could, yeah, I could, he seems like a reasonable target then. Uh, <laughs> reasonable target. Take him down. It's not a hunting <laughs> expedition. It is. It is. You know, He's actually like. Right now, Ollie's, is too big a prey, you know? Yeah, Ollie, yeah, Ollie annoys me. Can't take that down. I watch his hamstring curl and I'm like. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever get that no. to that range. It's a uh, yeah, not a yeah, not at this point. He's the you know wild elephant. I'm not ready for that. Mm. <laughs> like, He's got to take down the game. baby elephant first, yeah. <laughs> which is Carson. <laughs> yeah, baby so elephant. Ollie coaches Carson. So that yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take That's down good. the apprentice first. Yeah. Um, shout out Carson. Wilbur's coming for you. We are here today to talk about uh, in a roundabout way. Just a very good thing, I my, in my opinion, which is the rise of the young youngins, lift. the the whippersnappers in the, the boys. Gym. Um, no, not just the boys, the girls too. They're everything, the good yeah, and yeah, bad yeah. behind it. The youth, but the girls could be the boys. They could be part of the boys if they wanted to be. <laughs> yeah, if they want to be. Twenty twenty four. They want to be grouped into that. Um, yeah, just generally talking about younger lifters yep. in powerlifting, but mm. also just in the gym. Uh, some people, if you go to a commercial gym, you would have absolutely noticed this. They call uh, them the broccoli head crew. Less less of a good thing in those circles, um, simply because gyms have uh, almost become an after-school care, I've found. Yep. Like if you go down to your local... If you go to Good Life, Rabina. Anything ab- around schools. At 3.30 to 4 p.m. Yeah, something that... It does it have a school next to it, does it? Yeah, Rabina like Rabina State School is like just behind it. Yeah, yeah. See, like that sort of shit, you you you're leaving yourself. It's over open. for you. Yeah. Yeah. 
uh, those sort of gyms, if you train in any gym like that and you train at any time around that, even at Worlds Burley when, the corner, when I trained there for a little bit. Horrible. Uh, yeah, if you're around that time, you're more like you're walking in and you want a machine like a – actually any machine. They, they just hoard to any they machine. They congregate. There seems to be like eight people on one machine at a time. And uh, like I said, can be viewed as a good thing in those scenarios. But usually in those sort of places, it's it's not such a good thing as viewed as like – Parents saving on their uh, after school care fees by sending people to the gym. Yeah, sixteen ninety five a week versus a lot sixteen dollars an hour or something yeah, that yeah. after school care is. It's a, it's a yeah. smart choice. And they just uh, you know fuck each other up on uh, on the machines. I've seen it on squats a lot. I've seen uh, like a group of kids uh, where it was. I remember one incident around the corner in particular where there was a bunch of I want to say like 16-ish year olds and they were doing squats quarter squats of course perfect yeah they have and to be. uh yeah no range no full range around here and you have to get the most weight as you can on the bar and then they were all doing it and they were taking turns just doing the same weight because you do mm. and then one of their little brothers or something must have been with him and he was like noticeably younger and smaller and weaker and they're like nah mate you're all right get under just do the same weight as us you're sweet and then just like continue to fail and then they would just like pick him up out of the bottom for for reps okay yep. so sort of a bicep PR. Would, yeah yeah a bit of a dual effort yeah that's good um but anyway we've <laughs> we're on the good side we've also noticed an uptick in youth in powerlifting from a, a good perspective as yes. in like a lot more annoyingly really fucking strong <laughs> lifters that just seem seem to be coming in here and then squatting over 200 with ease. Uh, yeah, does my head in. Yeah, and... Because um, I coach half of them. Yeah, yeah, you seem to uh, attract it. And uh, nah, but yeah, but it's a, it is a good thing. At our last novice comp, we had a bunch of kids in that one that were... I think the top under, three in men were 21 and under. Yeah, which is pretty crazy. mm and, uh, they, and they weren't like small numbers they were putting up either. No, nah, squatting, like I said, squatting well into the 200, deadlifting well, well into the 200, um, and benching mid 100s at, I don't know, 70 to 90 kilos, yeah. let's just say, as a range. So pretty good numbers. Uh, I started lifting at around 19. Yeah, I think I was the same, about 18, 19. Like I'd played sports. My entire life up to that point, I played pretty much every sport imaginable. Uh, sport six days a week as a kid. I think you were the same. I think mm-hmm. we've mentioned on previous podcasts. Uh, so I'm not saying I did nothing um, and just went in blind at that point. But we didn't do any like weight training. Like I did. Yeah. I wasn't in the. I don't remember being in the gym at all before that point. Uh, whereas now, yeah, kids are uh, are getting in there. Young men are in the gym and doing crazy shit. Not just in the gym, though, but I've seen, like, a noticeable increase in the uptake of, like, coaching, coaching services, seeking out information. And, like, obviously this – we've had discussions before about, like, how easily accessible information is nowadays with the rise of Instagram and TikTok and just internet in general, like, in comparison to when we first started or especially when I first started and, like, your only real source – for training stuff was like bodybuilding.com or like random YouTube videos. Whereas now it's like you go on Instagram any given day and you can find countless things to look at, follow. I think it's also because they're seeing people from around the world around the same age as them doing these crazy weights. They're kind of like the limitation in their mind just isn't there anymore. They're yeah. like, oh, he does it. So I can too. Absolutely. It's like yeah, that thought process around like, oh, what if I can't? It's like, no, 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 that guy does it, so I can definitely do that too. Why do you, what do you think draws me into powerlifting? Because like, like we, I just said, like we the, both played a lot of sports and I think it was just normal to play sports, I, I guess, th- through school and that. But then the other day, like, um, who was it in here that like come in and did, did the comp and then had to go and Bailey. go to school camp or some shit? No, no, no. So Max had come from school camp. Yeah, he'd been there four days before it or something. Yeah, and Bailey it's a good deload week, you know, just left, go to school camp. Left the comp to go and play baseball. Yeah, in the afternoon. I think it's a combination of two things. I think it's a combination of the rise of TikTok and these crazy lifts being posted on TikTok by young kids from around the world because they just see it and they're like, "Oh, I want to do that too." And I think it's because 
in uh, like powerlifting specifically is becoming more like mainstream cool. Mm. Whereas like if we think back to maybe older days, like long before I was ever involved in powerlifting or anything like that, it seems like the older generation, if you thought of powerlifting, it was West side. It was these yeah, big, big belly fat man. dudes with yeah. beards and tatted up. And What's... now it's shifting a little bit. The paradigm shifting a little bit to like younger kids and like all of these like wildly crazy lifters coming out of the States that, because they have powerlifting programs in their schools from like 12 years old. Yeah. Yeah. It's, that's powerlifting. Powerlifting in general has become a lot more accessible because yes. um, even from when I started, because, well, before I started, it was equipped. And that's what I always viewed it as. Uh, my friend Tyler, who I did bodybuilding with, did powerlifting well before me. He did equipped because equipped was all you could do. Mm. And that really put me off doing it for a while. I was just like, I'm not getting in a suit, man. <laughs> I don't know. It just seems hard. Seems uncomfortable. Yeah. And then uh, – and then raw kind of started gaining and then I, that's when I stepped into it and it was easy because all you needed to do was chuck knee wraps on because like, well, the, the feds that I was competing with was knee wraps. So like I did, um, and then these days even easier because it's, it's sleeves for the most part, you know? So sleeves is easy. And these can, fancy ass new sleeves. You can go to worlds, chuck knee sleeves on, do squats, do bench, do deadlift. A lot of these commercial gyms have, uh, somewhat good gear in them for squat bench and deadlift. A lot of them do nowadays, well. yeah. Yeah, not the best of the best, but they have like, in, you know, it's enough. It's um, not uncommon to walk into any worlds nowadays and see like an AMFX bench or a Valhalla bench or like some calibrated plates. Yeah, either, though. yeah, a few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean. Deadlift they, they bars. Enough like, yeah. to get by for sure. Well, at least the they have enough to, to start. Yeah, exactly. Which but, is... And then, and then, migrate to a place like this, which is kind of what I did. I, I started when I started lifting, I lifted at the Navy base, which was just like bare minimal scraps and the floor was wooden and deadlifting there wasn't, wasn't fun. Uh, well, it wasn't, uh, well, it was fun, but it wasn't, yeah. It felt like you were going to go through it at some point. Yeah. And then I searched strength gyms around us or whatever and found um, uh, my local strength gym, which became Burley Strength. Mm. Uh, laid it down the track in its, in its generation. So, like, yeah, found that. And so that's the evolution of everybody that kind of gets into it. And you kind of, like, you niche in and you go and find things. Yeah, absolutely. That was kind of similar transition to me. Like, I just started as a PT and I was working out of a Jets. And the Jets I worked out of, we were in an office building. So above us was Centrelink offices. And they didn't, we were, you weren't allowed to deadlift in the gym. Mm. So I had to kind of find a way and I just started getting into deadlifts and I was working out of another gym at the time, AMPM, which was a calisthenics gym. Yeah. So I could deadlift there, but they had no equipment. Mm. And then yeah. I was like, yeah. but I had all the equipment at Jets, but I couldn't deadlift there. And then one of my mates was training at Hold Your Own at the time. And he's like, oh, why don't you just come check this out? Yeah. And they had like a free open night or something like that. And I went along and I think I walked straight in and I was like, yeah, I want to sign the paperwork now. Yeah. It had everything like power, like platforms, racks, every bar you could think of. Yeah, it did. Like it was just sick. It was a powerlifting gym down this. Yeah, powerlifting, bodybuilding s gym that was more of like a specialty sort of gym. Down at this end of town. Yeah, down this end of town where I um, lived. At that point, I didn't even know about PTC or and I didn't really know anything about powerlifting still. I just kind of knew of strength training and yeah, went along to that. Yeah. And even at that time, how long was how long ago was that? That would have been 2018, 2019. Somewhere around there. Yeah. So five or so years ago, you yep. got uh, still like a lot of younger, like as in teenagers in the gym at that point. Not really. Yeah. Not as much in there. The I last, guess the. Like pretty much pre like since COVID, maybe just. I little... genuinely, yeah. Well, it's funny because like, as I mentioned, I think that the rise has genuinely stemmed from TikTok. Mm. COVID proved TikTok to be like went like blew up, like went through the fucking roof. Yeah. Everyone was on it because there was nothing else to do. So I genuinely think that like the I've rise of on it. powerlifting within it. Well, you have an account. I do, but I've, <laughs> I've never been on it. <laughs> I genuinely could put the rise of powerlifting in Australia amongst the younger lifters to the increase in TikTok without a doubt. Yeah. I reckon you could, I reckon, I reckon you could, I reckon you could research and track it and I guarantee there'd be an, 
uptake in it. But this isn't a podcast known for its research, so... No, nah, we, we don't really care. It's <laughs> we, we anecdotal, just, yes. but I saw an increase. But that's like genuinely, like because when I was training at Hold Your Own, admittedly, the price point for that point in time was a little bit higher. It was $25 a week. Yeah, I was working just, out of a Jets that was $12 a week. Mm-hmm. So like there wasn't a lot of younger kids who were willing to spend that much then. Um, obviously, it's changed a little bit now amongst most gyms. Like pretty much every gym is more expensive now. Every gym is twenty five dollars a week. Yeah, yeah, without a any, doubt. Like any good gym, any good gym with half the even jets and stuff are like twenty twenty two. Yeah, so like they've all gone up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and just seeing this rise in young lifters and like good young lifters. Yeah, yeah, dedicated. I think I don't Committed, know if we said like, it on the on the podcast recently, but you know, shout out to. Uh, the the crew that we have in here of younger lifters, uh, we've got guys like, uh, Tobias. like Tobias and like Kiva that um, are spending their paychecks on coaching with yeah. us, uh, including nutrition coaching as well. Like at at uh, you know, under twenty, that is a uh, you know that's an expense. A lot yeah. a lot of people, a lot of forty year olds would go like that is too much for me, and so then and, and you know I'm not at that dedicated to my health and fitness to, yep. but to, to do that under 20 is, is impressive in my opinion, because you know, that would be a lot of his income. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that he's really dedicated towards it. I remember talking to Tobias about it in particular. Obviously I coach him for training. George has his nutrition and we were discussing ways in which we could improve his performance and things like that. And I said, like, I do believe nutrition will actually help you a lot. Like it doesn't need necessarily absolutely. be something that you're going to do forever. But I can promise you right now that the investment you make will pay off long term. And he he's like, okay, cool. I just got to go run some numbers and came back to me. He's like, all right, sweet. So I've just canceled. I think he had to cancel his KO subscription or something <laughs> to, to be able to pay. Like, Sorry, mate, I'll give you my he login. just graduated school, right? Like, so he's yep. 17, just 18, just entering the workforce. Like to spend, you know, around 100, 150 bucks a week. Mm-hmm. on coaching and gym access and everything like that when you're probably only making under whatever, 500 bucks you know, or whatever yeah. like you know whatever it might be is that's a big commitment like that's a lot of money yeah. uh, at that particular it. point in time and like the commitment that these guys have and they all have the latest training gear and yeah, like, i love it it's i love to see it you know i respect it i love it but it's it's just interesting to me to see like i swear they're coming in now and they've all got their spd belts and their notorious lift shoes and the inza sleeves or the a7s or yeah yeah exactly and i'm just like ah i'm still rocking all the same shit i've had for the last five years yeah well let's talk let's like you said you do have guys like the and and a a bunch more really talented young lifters that are um yeah, that are really impressive and uh, are killing it and are only going up mm. and it's scariest to where it'll end. But um, let's talk about the, the, the coaching of them. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like a lot of the, a lot of the training is going to be the same. Yep. Uh, a lot of the coaching is going to be similar. Yep. Um, but there are some differences when you're coaching somebody uh, at that age versus 20 years older. Um, or even 10 years older, uh, you're at a different part of your life. Um, a lot of it, in my experience anyway, comes down to teaching them, teaching the basics and the basics done well, as in like, uh, you know, you even just said there, like learning to eat is fucking huge. Yep. Like the amount of, uh, people around that age that I've gone you know, they're, they're training really hard in the gym and they're giving it their all. Um, but they're just literally just not eating at all. And they're still, you know, have a lot of muscle mass to gain at that age mm. and a perfect age to gain muscle mass for it. Um, and I, I feel like nutrition is something that I see that like lets them down constantly. Yep. That I see. They just need to be shoveling it in. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it's really common to underestimate how much food you need when you're just like at that and you've never thought about it in your life sort of thing. Um, sure. TikTok's there and go, Oh, you know, yeah. Eat two grams per kilogram body weight and stuff like that. But yeah, but they're not watching those videos. Yeah. No, they just want to watch the some 16 year old deadlift, 300 Vlogs. kilos. <laughs> yeah. Um, that's all they care about. 
and then the other one, like just uh, to give to throw out another really general, simple thing, just teaching teaching them to work hard is a big one as well. Because like, uh, we've coached people that have just watched TikTok videos and just have no idea around training theory or programming and whatever, and just want to max out every single week, uh, which you could kind of view as training hard. If you're in the, if you're in those shoes, you're like, yeah, I'm training hard. I fucking max out every week, Yep. but it's not like real training hard. It's, it's the training hard is, is also, you've got to be smart to some degree and, and putting an effort kind of across the board in a systemized manner. Um, but also keeping it like fun to yep. some degree. So there's a lot of aspects to that and what that looks like. So if you want to, I don't know if you have any ideas just off the bat, it's a, maybe the differences or for me, through. there's a, there's a couple of different things that I've, I've picked up on whilst working with some of these younger kids. And I was having this conversation with someone the other day, but I think one of the things that like differentiates them from maybe some of my older clientele is like emotional maturity and they're just their development within Mm-hmm. Like their their brains, like uh, physically, emotionally, mentally, etc. Like they're just just life experience. They just don't, yeah. They just don't have that life experience. And as anyone who's gone through life knows, like as we grow, develop, age, etc. Like for guys, we don't emotionally mature until twenty five. Some might argue that that never actually happens, but <laughs> like within our brain and everything like that, like everything starts to settle down around that twenty five mark. So emotional maturity and things like that as well. But I've just noticed that things like resiliency work ethic etc like there's a big difference with maybe one of my younger lifters failing a lift versus one of my older lifters who fails a lift because in what way well, what's a they both care but one has enough life experience and enough knowledge on things around fail like they failed a fuck ton of times in multiple facets of their life to be like okay cool i can come back next week and do this yeah versus like a younger kid who may not have ever really f- tried or failed at anything yet and because they sometimes just ride in that wave of gains off of anything, mm. for them to suddenly start to realize that like they can't push past that precipice without you know dialing in the little one percenters all the time, like for them to fail sometimes can actually be a very big thing. Yeah, if it's their first couple of times doing so, because they don't necessarily understand that like it's okay, like that's fine. Come back next week and try it again. Mm. Like they don't. I find they don't have the the knowledge around like working really hard for something for a long time and then it potentially still not paying off. Or maybe like even to put a spin on that as well, like maybe not coming back next week and trying again. As in like, if you, if you fail, that can be part of the process sometimes. Yeah. Just and accepting it. Like going like, oh, okay, like that sucks. I'll hit it. You know, next block, like when we push for it and be willing to you know, go back to the base building, go back to the, to the fucking plan, I guess, to yep. the, to the nutrition, to this life stuff around looking at the, all the different factors and going like, Oh yeah. Like what can I improve? How can I make sure this doesn't happen again? Yep. Like that sort of mindset, um, takes a few, takes a few goes yeah. to, to develop. Uh, I, I, I've mentioned a few times that my program used to, <laughs> I don't think it was meant to be maxing out every week, but like, I think it, it was very frequent max outs uh, and we failed a lot. Um, and then I would just come back in the next week and try it again. And then it led to kind of one step forward, one step, you know, what, what felt like one step forward, one step back, one step forward, one step back. And not really, get, I remember I scored the squatting 200 for a long time because I would just try and hit it every week yep. and I'll get it sometimes. And then other weeks I just wouldn't get it yep. <laughs> and looking back and I'm like, fuck, I wish I, I had, uh, the, I guess, uh, I wish I had, could have thought and gone like, okay, like let's re-ramp this instead of attempting it. Like let's re-ramp. But I think I would have made easy progress because yep. I was slamming everything else and putting in a huge amount of effort into, into a lot of different aspects. Uh, but yeah, like the having the ability to yeah to be rational about it and be um, not just ride the emotion and yeah go hard. I think is something that can be taught or something that you know needs to be experienced as well. It's something yeah, it's definitely something that needs to be experienced. And there's definitely you see the mix between the younger the younger people coming in at the moment who have played sport and haven't played sport mm. because the people who have played sport 
they have a tendency to have a greater, like a little bit more of an emotional regulation around things. So they like understand that like it's okay to lose sometimes because they might've lost in team sports or yep. they've, yep. whatever the case might be versus, and they also generally have Start better, get better body yeah. awareness, proprioceptive yeah. skills, et cetera, versus the people who haven't. And then they just, they've never really failed. They've never really tried hard at anything and not had it pay off. So yeah. it's like, there's those little minute differences that, come from balancing that and sometimes it's a conversation of shit happens try again and other yep. times it's explaining like you know this is okay like it's going to happen in other aspects of things so i think beyond that there's like not actually that many differences like well, the same principles apply i mentioned one thing there which is just keep it at fun um yes yeah, there's yeah there's multiple aspects to keeping it fun because fun is different to different people fun is very subjective yeah but i i always find like uh and this could be honestly applied to to anyone but like in particular because the attention span is often shorter um just really like trying to gamify things going like you know finding the wins in each and every session in each and every week and going like uh like if you use my fitness pal and done the tracking on that uh yeah my record was like 4,000 days straight or yeah, something. Yeah, exactly, right? Because the thing, like, congratulates you. It's like, oh, you did two days straight. And you're like, yeah, that dopamine yeah. hit. Yeah, and you're like, well, three days straight. And then it was 100 days straight. Oh, jeez. And then, like, you just keep ticking it off. And then you're, like, it's because it turns into a game. Like, you almost mm. you want to do it because it's, it's a little game. I find if you can do that with people, which our training app and, and training apps in general make a lot easier, you know, because they can say, hey, yeah, you, you PB'd your, not only your squat bench and deadlift, but your, uh, chest press or your this one or whatever yeah they can turn it into a game and and track all the stats for you and tell you i find it's really powerful in helping people yeah like see those wins and then yeah gamify it and and keep it fun i think it highlights too about it it teaches it teaches important lessons about like that good things do take time yeah like i think um if you can see it well yeah. with training especially sometimes even if you can't see it because it's really, really hard to have a long-term thinking and understanding when you haven't been around for a long term. Like you haven't, re- they've like they've not really been around long enough to actually understand that like things take time. And like with training, especially, there was something I read the other day that was like something around the long lines of like training is the only thing that you can't like be given, can't be bought, can't like the progress you make from training and things like that. Yeah, like you have to go and do the work. You have to go in, you have to do the reps, you have to do the boring sessions, you have to turn up when you don't want to, you have to yeah. eat the food, you have to sleep, you, like all this shit. You can't buy that. You can't just get given it. No. You have to physically go and do it yourself. And it teaches them really important lessons around like working fucking hard for a long time. Yeah, it's just hard. It's sometimes in a, in a sport like powerlifting where you're not, yeah, like if you're only maxing out every six months or whatever, um, if that's your only metric on what progression is, is your one RM going up, then it's going to be really hard to like just push when you're not doing that. Yep. Um, outside of comp preps and things like that. So, and then I it's going to get really boring if you realize after like three to four years that progress takes a lot longer to make. Yeah. Yeah. Once you pass those newbie gains, but you can, yeah, you can, you can use the, the, the training app or, or track it yourself as a coach or whatever. Uh, use videos, use lots of different methods to to gamify it and then go like, hey, this is going up, that's going up. Mm. Well, you know, we see it, we've seen trends in in past training when this goes up, that goes up, and you know, um, develop, you know, just being able to show that. Yes, yeah, keep, I think that's keep the attention for sure. Yeah, um, I think the the competitions like we run novice novice comps or you know deadlift for dogs or uh, uh, lots of different kind of different competitions here every three ish months, uh, and in Townsville a little bit more frequently. Mm. And I think they're really, really powerful. Um, it's like, I just think having a goal, having an, having a, having a, like a testing day. Yeah. So you're not testing every day yep. is really fucking powerful. Yep. Uh, and then you can put that progression mindset to, uh, in, into effect, you can go like, okay, like if this is the plan to peak for that day and we're going to drag that out. Whereas um, 
I think when you left your own devices, it's like, I feel strong and going for it. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, I ate good this morning. Mum cooked pancakes for brekkie, so I'm on. Yeah. So Time to max out deadlifts with the boys. Yeah, I found that that, that sort of, you know, having a comp to aim for helps, helps keep people in line and helps to gamify it a little bit because it's like a, you're working towards something. Yeah, it gives them something tangible to work towards, but it also then adds like a like that little other effect that almost is a deterrent to maxing out earlier because you don't want to max out any earlier in the case that it makes that less Yeah, on that day, right? So it's like, I definitely think those little things are good. And we've got, I've got clients in here myself that they don't really have any goals of competing within federations or anything like that. Like their favorite thing is literally just to get stronger in the gym. And then they use the novice comps and deadlift for dogs and things like that just to test it. Yeah. Just to see how they've tracked for the year. And they're like, okay, cool. So I can look back 12 months from now and this is where I've progressed to and from and things like that. And it's like, it's a fun way to test it. Yeah. That's a sick way to look at it rather than just max out your own. Well, we've mentioned a couple of them, but let's, let's kind of dive into the whole, uh, I guess the easier way to talk about this is just the the mistakes, the issues, the the problems that a a lot of these um, younger people run into. Uh, Don't share a bench with 10 other people. (laughs) Please. We've we've mentioned a couple. Every commercial gym goer ever. Yeah. We've uh, we've mentioned a couple just by bored easily as in like, you know. Short attention spans. Yeah. uh, Like when when you pass those newbie gains and PBs aren't flowing in every week uh, and like you said, having to have the life experience to kind of like grind out through things uh, in other aspects of life. A lot of people just like a lot of these younger people just kind of hit the, hit that point and then go like, eh, this is hard now. Fuck this. I'm mm-hmm. going to go do something else. Um, the, that, the struggle with the grind, what, what else like pops up for, for you in terms of just mistakes or, or issues or, you know, things that, you even if it's just like understanding technique or I don't know, like what what problems do you see pop up for the for these kids? I kind of touched on it a little bit at the start and it comes back to the technique thing, but like and the the difference between people who've played sport and haven't. Mm-hmm. And like have been physically active versus haven't been physically active because there is a like I've noticed a huge difference in their ability to move their bodies and understand where their bodies are in space, like massive difference. Yeah, I think this is something that we can talk about as far as like um, from a from a coaching or programming application as well. It's, is it's, it? it's both for sure. Like it it comes across from like a coach you need to understand this, but also as a as a client, it's a good thing to try and teach people. Sometimes is like the basics work, but sometimes you need to make the basics a little more basic for some people. Because it's, as coaches and stuff, we've spent so long in the gym and like a majority of us have come from sport, but sporting backgrounds and things like that. So our ability to understand our bodies is a greater, like greater. And we just think that's the norm sometimes. And then you come in and you see some, some of the younger generation move and you're like, okay, interesting. That's something I never would have even thought of needing to like address. Yeah. But now we do. And finding ways in which to actually communicate that both in person and online is very important. Yeah. Without obviously making them feel dumb or silly because it's not on them. It's not their fault. No, no. They just haven't had the same exposure to certain things. And like, I think exposing people like that to a lot of different things to like, just help them understand their bodies a lot better is, is a really, really good thing. That's what I was going to say is like that when there isn't a base, like there's this base building we can talk in generally. And we typically talk about base building as, uh, you know, building up qualities that someone who has a pretty decent yeah, yeah, awareness. Yeah. Of- like if you're a powerlifter, typically you're good at certain things and not so good at certain things. So our base building is to fill in the gaps in those not so good things typically. Um, but in somebody who hasn't trained before and somebody who's at that age, it's kind of like base building is like very, very broad. Yep. Um, uh, and it also make training fun. <clears throat> things like jumping around or <laughs> like literally just, you know, doing jumps or doing explosive stuff, doing power stuff, uh, or what we would view as power training, they would view as just fucking around. Yeah. Um, is is something that we can include in programming, like your your options for for what can be used is much much broader. Like, because if you've if you're dealing with a 
a 50 year old person, they're probably going to come to you with knee issues, shoulder issues, maybe like the past training stuff, uh, a lot more kind of baggage that is going to like make the exercise selection go from really, really wide to like, okay, maybe these things aren't appropriate for yep. their goal. They can't really do that. Uh, injuries have thrown this out. And then, so you're left with like a, a bit of a smaller bucket to some degree. Um, <clears throat> whereas yeah, now you've got a much wider and I think it's really important to keep them moving. Yeah, I agree. Keep moving, keep moving in lots of different directions. Keep your abilities wide uh, and don't specialize too early. Cause like the, the thing is that I've seen is like these, these people will come into the sport, they'll specialize really, really hard in powerlifting because you can, you can, like you, you haven't, like I said, you haven't got injuries, you haven't got like limitations yet. So you come in and you just squat, bench and deadlift a million times a week, every time, uh, don't really do anything else. And then all of a sudden you get really good at those things really fast because your skill just goes through the roof as in like you just get good at the movements, get coordinated in those movements. Uh, and then all of a sudden, maybe not in the first year, maybe not in the second year, maybe not even in the third year, but at some point kind of like you've stopped doing those other things and you've gotten really, really good at those things that now like doing anything outside of those things is really, really hard now. Yep. Um, and detrained to some degree. Uh, and your base is no longer a good base and you're yep. just really good at a couple of things. And then, yeah, then things start breaking. I was going to say those people go one of two ways. They either break and disappear. Yeah. Or you just get bored of it because you're well, like, well, exactly. I, fucking, I or can't just, do anything else. Or they're over it and they're just not, they haven't built enough of the, the actual base that you want to build yeah. to actually make any decent progress long term, and they just pack it in. But I see that and the emotional stuff, the, 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 Unwill, like the boredom or the unwillingness to grind as the two major reasons why we see this kind of come into the sport and then out of the sport like really fucking fast. Yeah. As well as social media kind of shitting on us and <laughs> showing us that some guy overseas is just 10 times stronger than us. But whatever. That aside, um, I think those things really make people enter and exit the sport really quick. Yeah. Because it, like there seems to be this idea that if I start at, you know, 15, and I like I've got a head start on somebody that started at 25, which is absolutely true. Um, but you don't often see it play out as those people just keep going on forever and end up like phenomenally way better than the person started 10 years later. Usually you see is that the training age sort of they hit that, you know, five years, maybe a bit longer, uh, get to it and then, then start to dip off from one of the reasons that we've spoken about. Yeah, and um, the the actual age age doesn't end up mattering for a lot of them, yeah, for a lot of people. And I think in terms of like stuff like that as well, like if we look at some of these kids who are fifteen, sixteen, even seventeen to a degree, you see them come in, and realistically speaking, a majority of them are at school. They have no responsibilities in life. Their mum and dad drop them off to the gym. True, they can train. They go yeah. home. That's all they do. They don't have financial stress. They don't have life stress. They don't have anything else to do with their time. Yeah. They've got nothing. Once they start to reach that, like, you know, 18, 19, they've graduated school. Yeah. Maybe they now have to have a job. Yeah. Maybe they're not living at home or maybe they're studying at uni full time or now these like little responsibilities and life things come yeah, into rent, play. Rent sucks. Rent, bills, fucking, they realize that actually paying for a gym membership plus all the supplements that you've been taking plus your food is actually expensive and your parents don't fund it anymore. Yep. Or the other thing that I guess is quite prevalent within younger people is obviously drinking, partying, oh, exploring, yeah. talk about that. traveling, like all of this sort of stuff, right? Like, you know, they've gone from no responsibilities and then they get two days off every single week to all of a sudden they have to work throughout the week whether it or study full time and they're working casually and now they can't get to the gym every single day through the week and then all of a sudden they're out on the weekends partying and now they don't train on the weekend at all and they've gone from training five six times a week to one or two at most yeah i think that's that can lead into something though uh and some good advice is that if if you're just training on your own with your headphones in and doing and following your powerlifting program from whatever app you downloaded. And um, uh, it can become way more boring and all these things that we've mentioned uh, happen a lot quicker, creep up on you. Whereas in here, really try and make it what I would call like a team 
kind of environment. Yep. It's not a team sport, but we definitely try and make it a team environment. Absolutely. Yeah. Everybody's fucking screaming. At the, you go to every Instagram page, you'll see it. Like everybody's kind of cheering on each other. And it's not only us. Like like powerlifting gyms uh, uh, typically have this sort of environment to some degree anyway. How, how well it's done, whatever. Um, but yeah, we try and bring this team aspect to it, which means that uh, there's some level of social aspect to being in here. And an uh, accountability too. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. But the, the the social aspect can kind of like um replace that. Just going out on the weekend and so, yeah. like not all the time. No, nah, my issue was that the boys that I went to the gym with were also the same boys that I went drinking yeah, yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm not saying it's all. Yeah, it's not 100 percent going to replace that it. That was but my I'm... fucking issue when I was 18, <laughs> or like by the time I started training around 19 to probably 21. Yeah, 22 maybe. And then I was like, yeah, alcohol is really not helpful to any of this stuff. Yeah, I'll definitely do that too. But it's, I, f- I feel it helps restrict it to some degree. As in, like, if you're getting a little bit of the social box checked in here mm. um, and there's a team aspect to it, then it helps uh, everybody support each other, keeping each other accountable. You know, you don't want to fall behind. I know there's a lot of, a lot of things that having that environment helps with that. And I think that plays heavy on the environment too, because I think that, the environment that would be created through a gym like ours through Nexus versus a commercial gym. Although they still get the social aspect and the fun and everything like that, mm. it's also then yeah, but it's a, yeah, it's it's very a different. different social aspect. That's then, why I said more of a team. Yeah, exactly right. So then like those people, they're like, oh, oh, I'm going to a party on Friday night. Do you want to come? Yeah. Instead of in here, it's like, oh. What day, I gotta, are you what day are you coming in to squat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, are you coming in on Saturday morning? All right, cool. I'll come in on Saturday morning too. And we can we can train together. You know, they're training at 8, 9 a.m. in the morning. No time to go out drinking. No. They're going to bed early, having their food ready to get up in the morning and come in. And I think that that is something that we're very fortunate, you, you and myself, that we can have a little bit of a positive impact on that sort of thing. Um, Because like it's very, it's really common for me to hit up some of my younger kids that I coach and be like, what time are you training Friday, Alba? Are you coming in Saturday morning? If you're coming in Saturday morning, I'll come in and train when you train. Yeah, for and sure. like keeping them in to that, you know, coming in and training with them and just training alongside them and just being around that social aspect and then them seeing the positive outcomes that come from that. And I I know for, for a fact in here, we have some people who were 17, 18, who are almost training partners with like people in their 30s and 40s. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's like Polkov is friends with everyone in here. <laughs> yeah, friends with everyone full stop. Yeah, exactly. Like he, he's and the kids come in and they they love it. Like they love having him around and and yeah. I know he loves being Respected, around the young yeah. kids and things like that. And like it's just this environment that we've managed to just fester into this really positive area. There's something that I would definitely want to push it more, even even more during uh, this deadly for dogs prep. Like I'd love to see everybody come in and hit some heavy deadlifts on a Friday over on the same day. Yeah. Or so that was like something that. that I know we've managed to grow through your prep for pro raw. Like it was Friday over. It was the day because a couple of the boys had pro raw. And I think you had the boys coming in on a Saturday for when you were coaching them through to pro raw. And like yep. everyone came in a squad on a everyone Saturday. Be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I was going in for Valhalla prep and Hans and me were coming in a squat and we managed to, you know, admittedly yep it was a smaller group because it was a mid-friday afternoon mm. but it was still the same eight to twelve people every single friday were like coming in to train with the boys yeah definitely and those that. environments and things like that that social aspect that team environment that like it provides almost like a place of home or like a feeling of comfort and safety because you're like i'm not alone you're training alone to a degree you're and competing, alone. like you said, Ellie, accountability. Like if you, yeah, if you miss out on deadlifts, then you have to. If, if like if I miss out on deadlift day, then I have to come in tomorrow and do it alone. I yeah, don't, I don't want to do that. Oh, hundred you know? percent. The amount of times through prep, I was like, "Fuck me, I don't want to squat." If no, one I else don't is, want to finish work yeah. on a Friday after being on my computer all morning, going and squat heavy because I'm own. tired or it's been a big week, and then I'm like, oh, "Hans is going to be there. Who's going to spot him? Who's going to help him load?" Well, I have to be there. And then he's he's wrapping me. So I've got to be in there for him as well. It's like, yeah, okay. Even like I remember through um, some weeks there was like where I was injured and stuff where I'd still come in to help spot or load or whatever because it's like you just want to be there. You want yeah. to be around that environment. And I know you've had that before in previous preps with 
with groups of guys and stuff. Like, All the time. You just want to be there because everyone's going to be there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I remember people coming in just because, like, not even, they weren't even training. No, just hanging out. <laughs> We've had that here before. I remember, yeah, yeah, I yeah. think it was, I think I was prepping for APL Nats. Just and it was like a Friday Arvo. Yeah. And we ended up just accruing this group of people that no matter what, every Friday would turn up. Yeah, I think we was, we threw a barbecue a couple of times too because yeah, yeah, everyone was sure. just going to be here anyway. So we yeah. just like these little yeah. things that we can create that are very yeah. special and different there, there to any other environment. To, like in all, all these things that we've said come back to just like trying to, like whether it's from a programming aspect, uh, a supportive team environment aspect, uh, uh, all these different ways that we can help foster. It's just to keep, it's just to keep them engaged and in the sport for longer. Uh, and then that's going to lead to um, better outcomes. So like for, for, for these like younger people, as in like I, I agree. Know, I, burning out is going to be the biggest thing that uh, they're prone to. And if we can keep them around and keep them like locked in longer, they would. Yeah. I always say that like one of the best things about being a coach is helping people not make the same mistakes I did. And I know I'm, guarantee you're probably very much the same in in terms of like exactly that like being able to keep them around for longer we know how to do that because we're like okay what well, why don't we just take a little bit of focus away from spd for a small amount of time get yeah. some movement variability and get some different fun and games in like get some different shit in the program that they're like oh this is actually fun like this is refreshing this is different and then that keeps them around for a little bit longer and then all of a sudden they go back and they do another peak and they're better and they're stronger and they're like oh that really worked yeah i no kind of wrapping up here, but just to touch on it as well, like something that just popped into my mind is uh, encouraging other sorts of training that we kind of can't provide or whatever. Yeah, as I in know. Like, I know a couple of guys do some martial arts stuff. Yep. I have a couple of guys that do um, like not even boxing, but like box, like fit stuff uh, that are part of like, you know, the craze at the moment, you know, the running stuff, like things like that. Like, n- but not only going like, hey, like I'm not trying to like say, yeah, oh, you know, you're a powerless to like don't do that stuff. I'm like, like, unless we're in a comp prep, I'm like, hey, yeah, go do that stuff, but let's do it in a smart way. Let's program in a smart way where you can put that in. Don't just fucking throw it on top of the program. We'll work that in, um, and and help. And again, that's just another like thing that's going to make it fun. Thing that's going to make it keep you around longer. Yeah. Um, and keep you rather than just jumping and ship and kind of like getting half good at this, then going to that thing, getting half good at that, then going to that thing, getting half good at that, like combining them, make it a uh, smoother transition so that you can kind of flow between, have focuses on different things at different times. Yep. That's yeah, I something that I am always encouraging people to do. So yeah, it's another small aspect, but cool. I'm happy to leave it there. Um, Wraps us up. Well, if, uh, if anybody has any other thoughts on, I'd love to hear it, but um, obviously like I, I know it's not, just us and i know it's not just the gold coast i know that all around the world like the the demographic of people who are in the gym is is getting younger um so if you have any thoughts on it good or bad hit us and uh yeah we can talk about this a bit more because i'm sure it's only going to keep going in that direction yeah if you're a younger kid who wants to learn some lifting techniques hit us up ask us questions if you've got any questions about technique stuff send us a video yeah happy to have a look at it for you awesome done Thank you for listening to the Nexus Unloaded Podcast. Be sure to jump on our website to find details on everything mentioned in the podcast today, plus information on our coaching, mentoring, and gyms based in the Gold Coast and Townsville. Make sure you follow us on our Instagram for any updates on what we are currently doing, and we'll see you all in the next episode.